desert. The other thing I was hoping to achieve was to echo the design of Asgard. So on Asgard, you have Heimdall's observatory, which is the entrance, really, to Asgard across the Rainbow Bridge to a central palace flanked by buildings. In our town, Puente Antigua, we have one street that comes out of the desert flanked by buildings leading to an old car dealership that, in a weird way, echoes the shape of the Asgard palace. It's a much more modest and heartbreaking version of Asgard. Nonetheless, I think it visually echoes the other. They built the whole town in New Mexico. A very cute diners and shops and things, a very personal little country town, which was a huge contrast to big castles and kingdoms, you know, in Asgard. In the story, in the struggle between Thor and Destroyer, to me, read like a showdown in a Western town. So I thought, let's look at a Western town. And that led me to the Tom Ford Ranch. We had people that were out there for uh, six months in New Mexico building this set. And the work they did, they took a town that was once Silverado and Three Tin to Yuma and made it this little, real town in middle America that I think anyone would love to be a part of. This town, which as you can see is a western town, we are converting it into a present day town, which is not totally atypical of a small New Mexican town. It will be the kind of modern evolution of an old town that perhaps started out looking like something like this one looks right now. It's going to take several months uh, of work to get this to a place where they can shoot it. We're going to start out with basically infrastructure work, putting in sidewalks, telephone poles, street lights, parking meters, roads, the things that make a town modern. And then we're going to recondition the facade, put in signage, and then there'll be a whole layer of set dressing that is really gonna bring it to life. The set design, that was just incredible. It made our job so much easier because we were surrounded by all this atmosphere. As you're walking down, you're like, I'm not on a set, I'm not on a set, but you are. It was so incredible, and every time we had to blow up one of the buildings or set something on fire, a little tear just rolled down the side of my face because I thought, I cannot, I cannot see this destroyed. Because we were going to blow this town up, we needed to have all the control we could, and so to be able to build specifically a heightened comic book slightly more colorful, slightly more lit look than usual for the town of Puente Antigua was a choice that allowed us the kind of control over the framing of it. Before you go, oh, because we're good on the, yeah. on the profile, we're good. Getting into the, 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 the schematics of all of that was, was fun. I think one of the biggest excitements was actually seeing the warriors and Thor on Earth, because we'd shot Asgard, we know it works, and then you think, I think I know what it's going to look like, but how is it going to be when these guys start walking through a small town in America? Probably the biggest challenge is melding the Asgardian world with the human world because it's very, very different styles. So we were acting the scenes that are just humans, you know, and we were doing it just like a regular movie. And then all of a sudden we had a scene with Asgardians where, you know, the Asgardians come and visit and they walked off of this very sort of heightened reality. And then the two worlds meeting, we were confused about how we should meet tonally and performance wise so that we all make each other look believable. That was very strange going to work. We're looking for Thor and we come right up to the window where we found him. It's just like, found you. And then the looks on Natalie Portman's face and Stellan Skarsgård's face was just looking at us going, what movie are we in? I don't believe it. Oh, excuse me. The Lady Sif and the Warriors Three. And I was glad we'd done the stuff here in, on stage first because where you inhabit the scale of Asgard, you bring that to Earth because you were able to sort of have that emotional memory. This is what you're, you're maintaining, your gods on Earth. Bo Welch has made it very real. He's made two separate worlds identifiable. He's made it so real that you can say, you know what, I grew up in Texas. I've been in a town like that. I've, I've lived in a town like that with the main street and everything. And these sets here in Asgard are something that you could see in your dreams. The film is constantly contrasting. It has a you know, sort of beautiful element about it, from Asgard to Earth, and then from gods in these costumes to Earth people, you know, and human beings. And, and with the fight sequences, you know, you have big dramatic flying and stunts and magic and all sorts of things, and then hand-to-hand -hand combat, you know, with a bunch of guys you know, beating the hell out of each other. 
the environments that these characters live in just breathe truth and reality and you're in the most fanciful and wild into the Marvel Universe and yet they feel just as real as the room we're sitting in. And what we want to do is bring visuals to the screen that people haven't seen before. Never mind what they've seen in a Marvel movie before, but having not seen in a movie before. At the same time, giving it the Marvel aesthetic of the wish fulfillment, of that relatable hero, of a journey of redemption. It's hard with a big action story to really hope that you could claim original or unique images, but I think that the fabric of Thor provides them, and I think that we've been brave enough to meet that challenge and visually to really enjoy the scale and the scope. That was exciting.